Well, Brady was asking Nolan if he wanted fruit throw up. Oh, there party. you have to have a fruit throw up. We throw the throw up out. All right. That was my line. Sports <laughs> fans, let's get started. <laughs> Welcome to the July 23rd meeting of the New London Planning Board. Uh, we have a fairly light agenda tonight, which is a wonderful thing. Just a quick reminder, we're being recorded. Um, okay, so uh, we will start up with a conceptual discussion from Ali Oops. And actually, we need a mic for you. Hang on one sec. I can talk. Oh, wait. I got you. Okay. Here's one. Oh, here's one right here. Sorry. Okay. Just to uh, help some recording. Hi, Al. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. How are you? Good, how are you? Oh, I feel so short right here. Because you will be on YouTube now. You know, you're know you going to be a new YouTube star once that's, this hey, gets posted. That's okay. That's okay. We're not going to ask you the yeah. same, though, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, everybody. I'm Allie from Allie Oops, who some of you, I don't, I think I know a bunch of you. Um, I finally decided that after 15 years of business in November, that it's time for me to have my own building. I've done some serious scouring of the real estate um, around here, looking for the size of building I want, the type of building I need to sustain this business and to grow a little bit bigger. And everything that's stopping me is the size of my shop. And there's really nothing available that will work with parking, which I know you have all dealt with a million times. and everything I need involved. And the build, the spot I'm in right now is perfect and wonderful and it's right on Main Street, but I, it's starting to fall down around me. And so I can't stay in there and have them fix it and all that kind of stuff and I don't even know if that's on their radar to fix. So we, uh, my family has owned the property be right behind us at 432 Main Street. Um, we used to own the entire property where the brooms own, and then my parents split it up and sold the front part. So we still own the two apartments out back, which has a garage that has completely fallen down, not fallen down visually, but it's <laughs> unusable. Um, and we had been talking about how we wanted to put a garage there. It's zoned commercial. So why doesn't Alley Oops do a nice prefab garage? with the possibility of two apartments, one apartment and an office, that, so that I could do like a studio size apartment to rent. Um, I mean, I know half my staff wants a small apartment to rent, but can't find that. Mm -hmm. So this is just one of the many ideas I'm you know, turning around in my head. Um, and the bottom of the garage would be studio space, floral design classes, um, anything like that, because we have a lot, we do very large scale weddings, even though we're in a s small community, and we just don't have space to do it. So we're tripping over each other all the time, the whole nine rounds, and I want to do more classes, but we don't have room to do the classes, and do the weddings, and do the daily deliveries and all that, which is a blessing, but I want to be able to offer more. I can't hire more people. We don't fit in the spot. We don't fit in a lot of the spots in town. So. With all that said, my main goal down the road would be to have a little sublet in someone's store or a tiny little building or somewhere in town to have the retail part with a cooler, a rack for flowers where people can come in and pick up orders, kind of just a small, tiny little flower stand type shop. Could be anywhere in town. And then we have our studio out back. Um, and that's kind of where I'm going. That's just my idea so far. Um, I've been thinking about this for about 10 years now and finally just coming to terms with, I think it's time to do it. So sat down with Adam, gave us so much information, um, but this is our first step. So I'm bouncing it off of all of you before I dive in. And that's it. So I want to jump in real quick because yeah. I did realize this afternoon one piece of information that I neglected to give you, which I should have. <laughs> um, so if it's on the screen, you can see yep. where the, the garage is. What I didn't realize is that the um, commercial zone does not snap to the back line of your property line. There's that back wedge that's yep. in the R1. Mm -hmm. So the commercial portion will have to happen um, in the commercially zoned portion yep. naturally yep. Um, so where the existing garage is which I know is really where the conversation we had was right. is really mostly in the R1 portion okay so I think the replacement garage would have to get slid, slid uh, back forward 
towards Street. towards Main Street, right? Oh, forward towards Main Street. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it's really right there. Um, the advantages: the uh, commercial has really small setbacks, so you only have a ten foot side yard setback, so mm -hmm. you can, um, you know, you're not sort of pigeonholed there with side yeah. yard setbacks very much. Um, but even the the existing footprint of the garage would have been used residentially. Right. So it did, because it didn't, if it was used commercially all these years, you could, you know, assume the footprint of yep. that as commercial space. Yep. Um, because it supported the residential use, it's not um, grandfathered in that regard. Got it. Um, so it's just a matter of making sure that it's it's within that back boundary, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of land yeah. that's commercial, obviously. And the other thing too is we could do some sort of configuration where we pull it all forward and the building itself is kind of like an L shape. Mm -hmm. And because um, there's still plenty of parking around the back side, there's plenty of parking on the side and the front. So. And then, I mean, longer term, which I just, I know this doesn't align with your timeline, but um, longer term, we could look at adjusting the um, boundary of the zoning right. district to snap it to the property lines. Right. Um, you know, whether or not the property lines were there when they were drawn, I'm not sure. And, right. And it's not always. It's not always natural to snap them to property lines because the property lines can change at the owner's yeah. request, really. Um, but given that this lot is really only accessed through the commercial zone, it really mm -hmm. doesn't make sense for there to be a portion of it that's not commercial. Right. Um, especially given that the houses have a pretty significant buffer down right. on Barrett Road. It's not like they're, you know, right they're up to the back They're not close, yeah. And there's actually like a man-made kind of culverty ditch back there that a little bit of water runs through there. Yeah, you can there. see it. Um, so you, you can't even really walk. We've tried to walk through the woods, and yeah, it's, the yeah, right on the yellow line is, okay. is a sort of culverty kind of thing. And we're still in the very, very, very preliminary stages um, with this. The other thing is my father does own the property, but he would be coming to you guys to hand over, not the rights to the property, but us to discuss all this with you, because just, I forgot to mention that part, so. Yeah, if you want to, if you feel free to come up, just use the mic and just okay. give your name and all that, thanks. Adam, I'm just curious, where does the, where does the residential property line start? Can you kind of draw it out there for me? Yeah, so. This is Barb Teach, my yeah, mother. Sorry, Perfect. mother. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. No, just for the record. Yeah. So on. So can you tell where the garage is there and. I, from what I remember, it's a it's like a sliver of the back of the garage. So it's about 61 feet on this side from that back corner, and then on. Let's see if this will work because we have a new. Ooh, it worked. Um, and about 86 feet on this side. So then, if we turn the overlay off so that we can actually see the imagery. Like there. So it's about I tried to run that <laughs> there more or less. So it's sort of honestly in line with the front of the garage. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So everything okay. behind that is residential. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Would, if, we, if we did something on the side of the apartment, the house, we could mm -hmm. attach it to the side of the house. Mm -hmm. That would be all commercial. And even if, you know, if the back of the garage was more or less at the boundary, right. yeah. that's fine too. Right. And, um, and you plan to keep the house? Is that the case? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's, I need to. Live it's there. currently two apartments. Yep. We rent the bottom and the top. Yep. So. Okay. That's what I thought. I just yeah. wanted to be clear. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is mixed use rebuild to add potentially more residential part of the conversation still? Yeah. Or? Eventually. Okay. Um, definitely, the building could be redone. There's no question. Um, but it's still in great shape. So that's the only reason. I mean, part of me would like to do an L, like I had mentioned earlier, and have maybe one more unit and have them smaller sized apartments than, you know, yep. for, for singles or couples or something like that. Excuse me, Adam. When you drive can, down the driveway. Yep. The Excuse me. When you drive down the driveway to those buildings mm -hmm. and you, um, to get back out, you, would go back out the same driveway. No, it's a it's a it's U. It's the U. It's yep. U. It's okay. U. And so how many neighbors are you abutting there? Um, right now the um, parishes the um, the parish, the brooms, the Huckins, 
And whoever's behind us are the abutters. Yeah, and the new and the new housing. Um, oh yeah. Well, they're not really. Oh. There's a property in between. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's right. The Hudkins is in the between. Hudkins is in between. Yeah. So, yeah, our deeds we have in, uh, ingress. Ingress is that the egress? word? In egress. Egress. So yeah, mm -hmm. but it's it is landlocked. I mean, there's no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The field beside us is the pat of uh, the big lawn that we've always used communally with the um, pastor and his wife and their kids, and the other side's the parking lot to. Hudkins Law that owns that building, and then the front is the brooms. But I'm not sure who's directly behind us on Barrett. I can't remember. Uh, Lisa, that, Lisa that, that's Jackson. what um, oh, no. just James Granger. <laughs> is a piece of unsolicited advice. Um, that's what concerns me. There's a whole cluster of property that's, that is very close to you, yep. and there doesn't seem to be any houses on them, but somebody owns that. And I don't know who that is, but... I would behind just, us. I, yes, behind, beside. I that, think uh, one, one of the Perkins boys. What's his name? Yes, Jackson. I, Jackson. Jackson owns a piece, and I read some. I Jackson remember. owns this one, and then it looks like Laura Davis and Jim Granger on this they one. They just just re-roofed it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, so my Lisa practical advice to you is: next door to them. Yep. Be sure you. Somehow or another, keep those people informed and whatever oh, it is absolutely. that you propose oh, absolutely. to do. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You are just our first step to just. <laughs> yeah. You know, yep. Do you recommend? Do you say yay or nay automatically, okay. or you know? Oh, ideas. You know, we're mm -hmm. just. This is the beginning yep. stages of ideas. We got to get an engineer, and you know that's a, probably our next step is our engineer and uh, start planning all this. But absolutely. Yeah, one sec. I don't know how it would affect. Yep. Um, the people behind us. Yeah, you I can't. I was talking to Adam about my property card. I'm speaking for my ex-husband. The property card says we have a view and we pay <coughs> tax for a view. I can't see anything. There's so many trees back there. Yeah, it's, it's so, fully wooded. You know, it's fully wooded. Um, so hmm. even even when the leaves are down, I really, I mean, I can hear the dogs barking. We have bears back there and we have mm -hmm. deer, we have deer, porcupines. And the, and the, uh, the parsonage's mm -hmm. backyard, all the fruit trees and uh, so had a porcupine out there today. So there's a lot of wildlife out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and just for the planning board's sake, this is a great example of why the commercial zone we allow for um, parking lots and driveways to go up to the setback, where you know if each one of these lots had to have their own individual egress, we'd end up with a lot more impervious area yeah. mm -hmm. and so many more curb cuts. Um, that yeah. this is really a good example of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Paul, you had a question? Egress no. wise, maybe not. Adam, <laughs> I'm, I'm not as facile with this. Can you, on a little bigger screen, show us the zoning map? So uh, not, no, out further. It's a, yeah. <laughs> I wish there was a so way the, to make it the, more opaque so you could see the buildings under. The orange is... Uh, orange is R1. Because there's a line on this map that goes right along the back of their property line, but that's, that's just a that's just the reference line. line. I'm not seeing what you mean that line? The, the line that... It looks like the back line of their property. Yeah, I think it's just the property line. Yeah, when so. I had looked at this a long, I would say within the last 10 years, to me on the map where my garage was, there was only a sliver of the garage that was in residential. Like, I, it, I mean, that's what we had. So I don't know. I mean, obviously it's different than what you see. The, so our tax maps got redone yeah. oh. about two years ago. So oh, okay. The data did get a lot better did. when they did that. Got it. Um, yeah, because I was like, I swear it was a just a chunk of the honestly garage. I really do think this is maybe something we should consider for this year this property oh, oh I guess there's some bigger ones Adam can I show you this sure as you say it's probably been since 2020 but yeah, all of these the garage 
Well, so that's the garage um, rendering. Right. So that is, um, they just took building footprints and placed them on the map where they okay. thought they were. Okay. Now that we have the aerial imagery, it yeah. helps yeah. dramatically. So I tried to find this on the website and I couldn't find it. And yep. I, in theory, this measurement should mm -hmm. still be the same. Ah. The, the reality is this footprint is just actually yes. yeah. further okay. back. Um, My question, uh, maybe if he looked at that, these are all commercial. Right, mm -hmm. and the lot lines all line up with the back of their property. If those are lot lines, those are the lot lines, but they're not the zoning district line. No, no, I understand. Okay, I, I, I understand that, but it looks like we have the situation where numerous of those properties are bisected. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, that's what you were just. Saying. I was just saying that yeah. gives it a little bit more. Um, yeah, just use the mic. Yep, thanks. So can you go back to the aerial when you get a second? <laughs> um, I noticed, and this is just, I'm curious. Yeah. So a decent amount of your property is parking. I assume that's not all parking you're using no. for your property. Mm -hmm. Is there an agreement? And I don't know if that makes a yes, difference. Yes, yes we, yeah. have, we have it in the Gotcha. Deal. And does that, all properties. would that make a difference for them? at all on any of the building like if there's an agreement on that parking does that impact what they do yes and so that's what what we had talked about last week when we met was oh, defining. Okay. <laughs> yep no sorry i was i was realizing that because i clicked on the red um before i turned it off it's outlining if you can see this outline oh I yeah yeah if i click anything else it'll go away so just take a look where the yeah. outline boxes that's of the commercial but that's yes aaron you're right that some of the parking here could be encumbered by agreements that were given to the village green parcel when it was sold um back to 20 years ago or whenever to the brooms mm -hmm. um, and so they're working on figuring out exactly what that looks like yeah. um, to make sure that the studio square footage aligns with what they can offer for parking for yeah. a retail use um, which I think it's fairly modest in size mm -hmm. what they're thinking about so they shouldn't need more than three or four spaces um, and then the residential units right now we require two spaces per unit um, but the legislation that passed this year um, I believe we're going to need to update our site plan regs because we can only require a maximum of 1.25 spaces per unit um, so that will help them a little bit it's going to reduce um, conversations we have to have at some point are whether or not we want to go up to the max of 1.25 or whether we're comfortable with one or um, and so hopefully we will have made it through those conversations before you um, get here um, but that's helpful too and especially for the potential phase two um, second floor finishing of additional apartments if that's something you wish to do yeah we have plenty i mean there's four four maybe five spaces right next to the garage there and then there's two spaces on the side of the house facing the hutkins property and then there's at least four spots right in front of my there's like six spots, spots right in front, right in front yeah. of my apartment or my house the house yeah and then we so. have we don't have to use the the u shape of the driveway we could be using one and want in and out so but i like i like the idea of the oh excuse me the u shape it's it's a lot easier i'm nope. <laughs> for people so as far and, as around the house not yeah. not the main street no yeah it has around to the be, house has to and be. just given the nature of the fact that they have delivery vehicles they may choose to have a couple extra spaces so that the yeah. spaces that are needed can serve customers and they have a little bit of surplus but um you know that's really for right right yeah charlene yeah um, but you, you also talked about flower arranging classes or workshops. Yes. Would that be at this location and yes. what parking requirements would that be? Well, we only have six people, eight people in a class. Yeah, it's not a huge class. When we do larger classes, we, out, we go there. Oh. Yeah, so. yeah, it's after hours when the, most of the employees yeah. are gone, so you consider their, their parking mm -hmm. spaces will be swapped yeah. with customer parking spaces. Yeah, it's always outside of our retail yeah. hours. Yeah. And just as a sort of aside, the class component is something that with other um, uh, businesses, we've struggled with sort of where to right. pigeonhole that in. Mm -hmm. um, and for the other ones also, we've considered them retail because there was a retail component to it, like the, yeah. um, the pottery painting mm -hmm. um, place, the um, 
the Center for the Arts, um, actually, we've considered their space to be retail because their gallery is all for sale, but they yeah. do some like wreath making classes and yeah. things. Um, they're actually moving into the, they'll be the, the group facing them, right. they're moving into where Village Sports used to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we've we've lumped the classes mostly into the retail yeah. category. Yeah. Um, it probably down the line we should um, refine our uh, approved uses in the permitted uses in the the zoning <coughs> the commercial zone mm -hmm. um, to expand it a bit. Um, but yeah, you have to consider their parking too. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they really only have about four or five spaces there. Yep. Um, but with our agreements and our, our deeds that we're, we're allowing them to use it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you're, the parcel you're currently on, the Soliotis property, with all of its extra parking, that most of the back half of the lower parking lot is outside of the commercial zone. I just, yeah, I noticed that too. That That's interesting. I wonder if at some point the zoning districts were actually different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it doesn't seem like we would have allowed them to pave that whole area. Well, look at Colby Sawyer. Yeah, I mean, at least that's probably a long-term, uh, yeah. you know, legal nonconformance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's exactly. uh, are there questions from the? Yeah, okay, Emily. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know that you said earlier you hadn't thought about converting the existing home into a shop and then building something else. Yep. You don't think that would make more sense than trying to? The I mean, layout. From ideally i mean yes it could be it just but it, it, it just seems to me it would make more sense to have that front everything right. right there for you right and then build something fun and right. residential behind. absolutely yeah and that, i mean that's definitely a possibility that's why we're here we're looking yeah, for ideas that i mean one thing would be that i would be displacing um the both tenants but if i build the garage with the apartments and they can move in there and then we retrofit okay um you know, it's it's not that I'm trying to rush, but I am kind of also trying mm -hmm. to get out of the location mm -hmm. I'm in. So, mm -hmm. and um, so, just a thought. Yeah, no, it's a great yeah. idea. It it really is a, a <sighs> very good point to make that as far as like highest and best use of the land, yeah. the area that's residential, tuck yep. the residential. The area that's commercial, keep the commercial. Yep. Um, obviously, it is a bigger I don't endeavor. Think you can but go back very far, but on the residential end, because of that culvert or whatever that yeah and right, it's let's right see what oh i love that the um but i mean there's a the new zoning new district is staying up even though enough. you could do the, all that whole asphalt part could be part of a building yeah yeah so it's where the parking is right now. the residential area is 0.17 acres which converts to I'm trying to see how many square feet you have there uh, yeah i tried to do that thing and the, i couldn't get those red x's to cooperate so it's 7,500 square feet, so so it wouldn't get you a whole. Hmm. It's always complex when a property straddles a zoning district mm -hmm. because for the portion in the R1, you'd have to meet the R1 um, standard. But the you don't even have enough for a total. We require 10,000 square feet per dwelling unit in the R1 but you only have 7,500 square feet in that portion of the land, but it's not like you don't have additional land. So I guess if we, to figure out maximum build out, it would take me a little bit of yeah. Yeah. Um, figuring that out, but yeah. um, it's- Well, Allie Oaks wouldn't need the entire house. She could just get by with just the top floor. Yep. And the bottom could be a residential. Mm -hmm. But there's all, yeah, as we say, there's all kinds of ideas. Mm -hmm. Adam, just <laughs> what, if in fact there's numerous lots here that are split and they're all in commercial use legally or not, what is involved in changing it? Is that town meeting? Town meeting. Okay. Yep. I mean, the ones west of uh, where Pete Swislowski is building the units now, I wouldn't be as inclined to adjust those because if you adjusted them to their lot lines, it's gonna be pretty close to the Barrett Road neighbors. The Pizzuslaski property, the Hudkins property, and your property makes a bit more sense to consider the adjustment. I mean, even like Jackson Wheeler's house has this little triangle that's right. apparently zoned commercial in his back corner, right. which 
obviously it's not large enough to do anything with. That's a little silly. Um, but it seems like if we were to snap, take his holy into the R1 and then this sort of triangle of the red space there to append that to commercial, it would give a little bit more flexibility to Hutkins and yourself. Um, you know, I, I think, right, I don't think Pete would see a whole lot of gain there, but um, it still may clean things up a, a smidge that we should consider that. Um, we are, that's on a town meeting schedule and then it goes to vote it at, um, on ballot for town meeting, not at the floor meeting. So there's, you know, obviously some unknown there. Yeah. Um, but it does seem to be shining a light on one we should consider. The rest of them seem, you know, when we get further up, it seems like it does align a bit with property lines. There's some random spots where it doesn't cause you know, it'd be sawtooth if you did, but, um, What? And you, yeah. And just to recap, too, that you would you would rent, I'm guessing, some commercial sp or some retail space that is on because one of the things I think that's great about the shop now is it is on Main Street, so you see it. I know. You know, and I'm like, oh, pull over, and then you know, exactly. so that's. And I don't want to lose that. That that's been my <laughs> holding me back, because my dream ever since I was a kid was to have a retail shop on Main Street, in New London. So I don't want to take away from that, but <clears throat> there's nowhere. Everything is, no offense, is real estate offices and off, um, real estate places and offices. So there's nothing left for us. Um, I, when I reached out to, we reached out to Pete about the creation place and there's a chiropractor going in there. And that's a prime retail location. And Pella, you know, it's, and I'm not, I just, I miss all the shops on Main Street. And so I don't want to take that away from the town. I want to find a little spot right in, you know, that we could do. I, I've looked at every possible rentable unit in town. And we could go to Baynum's, but, you know. And the that, parking is uh, what stops parking, me. The parking, parking is lousy if she tried to move everything there. Right. right. If she was just to do a little pop-up cooler, a small retail, yeah. she could do that. So mm -hmm. that would be an idea because she wouldn't need five, ten Parking spots. Yeah, yeah and you we'll get good foot traffic there yeah, from absolutely. Tuckers. Yeah. And um, the flower waiting. shop, the woman that I bought my shop from 15 years ago, we actually worked out of there. So I know that whole layout, and that could work, but I need the studio space. Yeah. And, like, my flower delivery trucks couldn't come in, in and out of right. that parking right. lot. Um, we try to even deliver a bouquet in there. <laughs> I mean, you guys have heard all this yeah. um, with that parking lot. So um, I thought about reaching out to PCs, their little their little, mm -hmm. that barn. little barn house thing. Um, you know, if Studio Sage, if she ever wanted to get rid of that small, which was, you know, Sparrow School, but I don't, she ha she's running a successful business right now. So these are all the thoughts that are going through. Hmm. What? We I already talked did. to her. Yeah. So, you know, if, if she was... Bill Green wanted to sell it. We wanted to run it. He was willing to sell. But yeah. We don't want to buy that. Um, we've talked to so many people. Yeah. And the place on the corner there on Pleasant Street is just too much money and too much work. Yeah. That place needs a lot of work. For to create the retail end of it. I was going to say, and as yes, of today, I, I think under contract. Yep. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. They actually Good. reached out to me because they had heard that I was looking at the spot. So, I mean, that's another possibility. Um, we should connect on that, though, because I think there may be opportunities there with the folks who have it under Yes, contract. they have reached out to me directly. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we're, we're talking about that. Um, yeah, so. I, I just, did you mention um, that little building that Blue Loon has? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. I love that little building, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at the Village Green, where the jewelry shop is. I yep. used to have a candy store there, and yep. actually Distinctive Florist started there. Started there, then I bought little, my little shop from. You know, front on Main Street. So mm -hmm. if she moved out of there, which I don't think she will, mm -hmm. um, that would be Well, that the would thing be is ideal. that, but that, the whole building is, the, the, the only reason I haven't looked into the Brims building is because it's, yeah. we used to own that building. We know how bad it needs you to be fixed. <laughs> so. He you, doesn't know how to change a light bulb, Mom. so. You're on recording. That will get posted, <laughs> yep. just um, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're, I mean, we've literally looked at everything. 
So, and I grew up here, so I know a lot of people and properties and ins and outs and trying to talk to people, and there just isn't anything yeah. that would work for us. And I don't want to really, I don't mind the other end of town, but that's not the walking foot traffic. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it worked for us to get started because it was so busy with Colonial Pharmacy and the other plaza and everything. And now we could possibly go in there, but it's just the rent, the cost of rent. And I already had those guys as landlords, and they weren't very easy to work with. So. Yeah. Um, other comments, questions from the board? So do you have any questions for us? I just wanted to put it out there, yep. you know, more ears knowing about what I'm thinking about doing. And I mean, your point about the switching of the buildings and talking about that, it's just all this, this is beyond my realm. So I need to reach out to you guys all to know what to do next. So, which Adam has filled us in, in, in on. Yeah. I want to take two seconds to just say thank you to Allie that I, I know most of you know that signs are the bane of my existence and they could probably consume my entire job <laughs> and they are a very difficult thing to follow up with owners on mm -hmm. and because it's very emotional that they rely on them to, to get their customer traffic and um, it nine times out of ten turns into something much larger than it has to be yep. and that was absolutely not the case when um, when the very cool vintage neon sign appeared in alley -oop. she yep. was the phenomenal to deal with we worked out a spot to hopefully put it on the side wall when it happened and yep. how much we appreciate that of and course I know, get that, it we all have to work together and it's it yep. makes my life so much easier you know it puts um, it, People can feel like they're voting on the ordinance and the rules that they, they agree with. Yep. Um, and we just really appreciate when, when we have a good relationship with thank you business very much. owners. So thank you. Yeah, no, I, it's all, we, it, that's my biggest thing about living here is we are all a community together and that's, we're not gonna fight against each other. I just want it to work. Yep, so. And next time we talk about signs, we have to look at her neon sign to think about maybe there are some cool opportunities mm -hmm. that... It doesn't flash. <laughs> it's right. not really bright. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. So. Well, thank you, guys. Appreciate cool. you coming. Thank you sure, very thank much. You yep. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. <coughs> all right. Well, thanks, thanks again for that um, exciting stuff there. Uh, let's talk CIP. Do you want to do a yeah. little update? Um, so... Uh, Either you or Paula can jump in if you have anything else to say, but last week we kicked off the CIP process um, with our uh, first department with Bob Harrington um, before his departure next Wednesday. Um, so it was nice to, to get one department under our belt. Um, if anybody's interested in attending, we'll be here the next, not this Friday, but the following three Fridays at 7 a.m. So um, we will meet, I, hoping with police next week, and then the following week, we can allot 90 minutes because there's not a police subcommittee meeting that morning. So we can do hopefully fire administration and rec um, in that morning, 45 minutes for fire, and then split the 45 minutes with um, admin and rec. Neither have um, complicated CIP asks usually, so I think it'll work. And then the following week, um, invite the the different committees, energy, conservation, um, those folks in. Um, I've asked department heads to clear with me that they're good for um, the second before I, or the ninth rather, before I go and offer the 16th to the, the uh, other committees. Um, I do need to touch base with the library still. I have not actually met the new director yet. Um, so I've been going to take a trip down there and introduce myself and explain the process to him. My guess is this is, um, you know, something a little unique. Um, so we will hopefully get them on the docket too, but we're off to a good start and about a month ahead of schedule at the moment, so. What are the dates? Sorry, Adam. Uh, let me just pull them up so I know I'm quoting the right ones. Uh, August 2nd, we'll do the police department. And then August 9th, hopefully fire, admin, and rec. And then hopefully the 16th of August, clean up the rest, um, and then schedule our September meetings. Yep, and then right now we're still in the old Excel spreadsheet, hoping to make it to the software, but um, 
we haven't made a lot of progress there yet. So it may be 2025. <laughs> Maybe. Paul, Paul, did you have a question? Perfect. <clears throat> Adam, I, it just struck me that housing is engaging on a pretty broad, do they have a budget? Is there any? They, they get a budget every year um, in addition to the grant money that they've received for this round. Um, they get, I think it's like 15,000. Janet, do you know? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I know really we should know. <laughs> the housing budget, I think they get ten to $15,000 yeah, each year all. that they can spend on additional. But they just got a grant. I mean, At this point, I'm not aware of a capital expense. Um, you know, I don't think that that's something that would be entirely off the table um, forever in the future. Um, uh, I was thinking there was, oh, the other thing I wanted to, um, and I hope I'm not stealing Janet's thunder, but um, was going to remind everyone that tomorrow night, um, Twin Pines will be visiting the selectmen to discuss appropriation of the potential $600,000 Invest New Hampshire grant that the, the town qualifies for. Um, I have a conflict tomorrow night, so I can't be there, but um, Andrew Winter will be there from Twin Pines. He came two weeks ago, I think, Janet, he, was he it? Did. He was at the last selectmen's meeting. Um, so that's online um, if you want to see his um, just sort of initial discussion. Um, the $600,000 Invest New Hampshire money is based on $10,000 per unit for the 60 units that qualify at Twin Pines. Um, we don't have official approval yet. There's still some documentation that we physically can't give them yet, like the um, assurance of affordability and perpetuity, which can't happen until the land actually transfers. And so once we have that, we can submit that. All signs are from the state that we will get the money. Um, Twin Pines is asking that the money be used to um, go back to them to support the project. Um, and so there are some examples in the Upper Valley already of this happening in various ways. Um, town of Hanover, um, two weeks ago, uh, I was at a ribbon cutting for Visions for Creative Housing Solutions um, in their new downtown Hanover location. There are a nonprofit that supports adults with special needs, providing housing and supported um, environments. Um, admittedly, I was on the board of directors for eight years, and my aunt and uncle are the founders. Um, but the town of Hanover um, turned around their entire uh, award from the state and donated it to the project for a solar system on the roof. Um, and then they have another project that they uh, are, should also qualify for, and they intend to use that funding for actually building housing on town-owned land that they already have. Um, and then the city of Lebanon, as you may have seen in the Valley News, there's been a couple of articles um, that they are working towards using their Invest New Hampshire money to build a cluster of cottages dedicated um, to city staff and um, city school district employees. Um, so yeah, it is. It's, and I, does anyone remember you guys, you weren't in the Housing Academy, though. That was me and Peter Nichols and Amy Kaplan, I think. I believe Dover used some of their money on that, uh, the cottage clusters down there, too. But don't quote me on that, because I can't swear to that. But um, So it's nice to see the money in, at least in other communities, going back into actually supporting housing. So, so if you're available tomorrow night and want to participate in that conversation, 5.30? No, 6. 6. Thanks for that up update. Um, anything, Janet, you wanted to add in terms of select board or anything? No, I think um, at the last meeting, Andrew talked about uh, all the different ways towns and cities have supported um, workforce or um, professional housing, I prefer to call it. And so obviously, since um, we get the sense, the selectmen in New London get the sense that we need that type of housing that perhaps it would be a good idea since we don't have land to give them or a building to give them to repurpose that this is an opportunity um, with the $600,000 to help. Right, that we wouldn't be getting otherwise. Right. Yeah. Um, any questions from the board on that? Um, kind of amazing not having anybody here from the public. I don't remember the last time that happened. Um, anything else we should talk about before we turn the camera off? 
Um, I think that's good for that, but nobody yep. jump. Okay, so I will go ahead and uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. Our next meeting, actually, sorry, is August 13th. I should have said that, sorry. Tuesday, August 13th. So is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second, anyone? Second. Second, oh, great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.